All right, y'all, we are attempting this again. Hopefully there is not as much delay in this video as was the last attempt we did. We are gonna dive into cheese tasting here in just a hot second. All right. Sorry guys, if you're just watching this video, we had a big fun intro, Life is a Highway, on the other one that involved children dance parties. Yeah, but, it was uh, so much fun. We had a sound delay, so we cut that one off and we're starting over and letting all of you guys start to tune in again. So we'll rack up the numbers again. We were at about 70, 77. Much better so far. All right, that is better. Uh, we'd love more positive feedback. We aren't gonna dance as hard. I think we broke the internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be it. We danced so hard on that last video in the intro that we just broke Facebook. Mm. So I'm glad we got this fixed. Much better. Much better. We'll just wait about another 40 seconds for everybody to come on. Okay. Can you put those down and wash your hands, my love? Thank you. Yes. Go wash your hands. Two ABCs. You need two, two. All right, y'all. <laughs> this is great. We are... I'm going to wash my hands. We are getting positive feedback i love positive feedback and this will be more enjoyable than being on a not i don't like when you're watching a video and the words don't match up it's it's really difficult so we are getting back to it 43 out of 76 we're halfway there um and then we're going to eat and uh we'll extend this tasting just a little bit longer and anyway you know what this was like uh this is like when you go on a road trip you got your car packed and you're, you make it to Mopac and then one of your kids is like, hey, but did you remember my medicine? And you're like, oh, the kids oh. never asked for the medicine. Yeah, no, They're like, did you remember the love? part of the story. I didn't think we it was are a split household because Dawn is usually like, OK, we're really close. Let's just turn around. And I once I don't know what it is, but once I leave the house, I'm, I'm going. I'm not turning back for anything. I've left the house and like. Like by the time I hit the highway, I realized I didn't pack my bag like I packed the bag but I left the bag at home yeah. I just go I don't turn around I, I, I don't know what that says about my psyche or therapist should tell me but I never turn back except tonight we turn back and I know we're getting, it's so hard we're getting positive feedback so many great uh all right we're gonna use. skip some of what we talked about earlier but yeah. the recap is Let's flavor is taste plus aroma we did a calibration um stick with us let's see we're gonna start with the um, white one with a red pepper on the outside. That's going to be our 12 o'clock and we're going to go around clockwise. Um, you got your menus, hopefully. There's a picture of this on our Facebook. Um, I got very, I intentionally am using plastic to go um, from our to-go drawers because yeah. that feels road trippy. Um, and stick with us and leave a little bit of each bite back because we're going to mix it up in a little bit. And we're going to have a absolute blast here, y'all. Um, we're going to eat some cheese here. Okay. Uh, should we dive in? Yeah, because now it's 6.20. Yep. And if you're celebrating anything, let us know so we can give a shout out. Thank you, guys. And thank you for telling us to reset. Yeah. Re as I said, I'm going to say the joke again. I'm pretty sure our dancing broke the internet. Um, it will come out in the news tomorrow. I don't know if you thought it got funnier. Like it the did, fourth it did. time. For those 22 people that didn't hear it, <laughs> I needed to make sure they heard it. So let's dive in and eat some cheese. You want to talk about Diablito? Yes. Okay. So we are starting. First of all, you should know that after we plated all the cheese, I thought, oh, we're going to be driving like zigzags all over the United States. We're not really going in a gas productive, efficient way. Mm -mm. But that's okay. This is the way we're going to roll tonight. And that's mostly because Kindle forgot to tell the team. Mm -hmm. um, and they cut like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces of cheese today for us. So we're not going to complain. We're going to be grateful. Um, but we're going to start right here in Austin and go over to Maynard um, to Bee Tree Farm. This is owned by uh, Jeremy and Jenna Kelly Landis. Um, they opened, I can't remember exactly, but about six, six years or so ago. And actually they got the farm a little before them. Um, but then it's just recently, in the last five, four or five years, been um, producing goat's milk cheeses. So they have, they are farmstead operation. Farmstead means they have their own herd of goats that they milk on the property and they make the cheese on the farm. Um, they have Alpines and Nubians. Part of our Cheese 101 talks about what, what, what influences the flavor of a cheese and breed type definitely is, is part of that. Um, and their uh, cheese maker is Victoria Suenos. So we're just coming out of kidding season, which means all the goats just had their babies. And so this is really the start of the cheese season, if you will. Um, 
and this is their fresh chef. I hope everybody likes it. Um, mostly the reason I say that is it's a delicious cheese, but this one is dusted in smoked chipotle and honey. So um, try to mm. get a little bite inside without the, yeah, so there is no just, rind, but try to get a little bite of the inside first. See if you can just taste the white part first so you can experience what the cheese tastes like. Hopefully you've let your cheese come to room temperature. It's always more delicious and flavorful. You get that aroma at room temperature. If it's colder, you don't get the aroma. Um, taste the inside mm. first, then get a bite with the outside. Um, and we will go from there. Yeah. Happy anniversary, 26th mm. wedding anniversary to Teresa and Cesar. Yay! And uh, we've got a birthday Yay, for Melissa. Yay, Teresa and Cesar. So, mm, that tastes great tonight. It does taste good. Okay, yeah. so when we got home, mm. we did not, I picked up my cheese plate at noon, just like you all did, curbside into the trunk. And because it had all these crackers and things on it, I didn't ever put mine in the refrigerator. So our temp is, our cheese is mm. way room temp. Way room temp. Um, some of you and our pairings might get the condensation has made them a little bit soggy. So that will be like they were in a road trip in the cooler in the bottom of the cooler and you pulled them out and you just didn't realize you put them there. But oh, we're going to no. roll with it. it. Looks like somebody didn't get a piece of cheese. That is a bummer that we will make that right. I promise. I'll reach out to y'all independently. But we have uh, so we paired this one with bugles. Um, bugles are outstanding. Um, when we pitch, we always pitch ideas. That next morning after I had this vision of doing this class, I pitched the idea to my team on Huddle. And Alex, our wholesale manager, who's been with us for six years, said, oh, like bugles. That was his first response. And then Andrea was like, you got to put bugles yeah. on it. So these are little corn snacks made by General Mills. They've I've, been, uh, I've never had a bugle. This was my first time. They were developed by Joe Applebaum, a food engineer, a food scientist, if you will, in the early 60s. In 1964, they, they announced that they were going to release these, and they did like limited releases in like Portland and New York and a few other cities. Um, got a lot of traction, and they launched in 1966. And one of the cool things about that when I was reading and doing the research, what I liked about it was that um, the the same facility outside of Chicago made these from 1964 all the way through 2017. So they didn't actually like grow out and expand. Oh. So they were just a small manufacturing facility just generating these products. Um, they are, uh, and what, anyway, one of the cooler things that I read about, the most popular- You didn't know that you're gonna get junk yeah, food history The most well. popular flavor of bugles in China, which is the number one market for them is ketchup flavored so who knew um to come up with our our pairings tonight we asked the team members like what was your favorite road trip snack we also googled and so a lot of these were on the thrillist um mm -hmm. thrillist most popular or most purchased um, like convenience store foods um but i'm curious to know they taste like rice checks they're outstanding oh and when i put it with the cheese it really just made it into a spicy bugle like so, i got the spice Christina just lined, logged in. Christina, we're on the 12 o'clock cheese, which is the white soft cheese that's rubbed in the paprika, the smoked chipotle. And put that at 12 and we're gonna go around clockwise. clockwise. All right. Yeah, bugles are so good. What I love about goat's milk cheese, um, and you're gonna get it in the next one too, but it's really tangy. Um, so it's known for this like tangy acidity. So you get that tanginess with it. Um, that was mm -hmm. a fun pairing. It almost was Frito pie-ish with like chili on yeah, chili chili like on a it. spicy chili yeah I could get that I like that that was fun well just anybody else's first bugle I don't think so I think there's a lot of childhood memories but yeah I'm curious for your road trip snacks if you were team savory or team sweet like what would what did you gravitate more towards like peanut M&Ms or something <laughs> oh. and on this one Tony's asking should we eat the rind the rind is honey and smoked chipotle so this is actually this a rindless is cheese. A rindless cheese. This is just a flavor mm -hmm. coating. It is outstanding and you should eat it. We all, we joke, a rind is a terrible thing to waste. So even as we go around the plate, you should try the rind. It might do something amazing on your palate. If you don't like it, stop eating. Uh, uh, if you, uh, it, and I misspoke, it's not paprika, Kyle. It's, chip, it's a chipotle, it's not a paprika. It's a chipotle. Um, and so, uh, Anyway, they're so good, yeah. Um, that was a great pairing. I had a Sorry, great time. Sorry, apparently she has come out. Apparently she's very interested she in the cheese plate. She likes snack food. 
Look, when are you on the next one? Somebody said wear it on your finger. So I'll get to that one in a little while. That is so good. It's so delicious. Yeah. What a good pairing. Um, Austinites, you can, when things are up and running, do take one of Jenna's events. Um, she does like awesome, like, date nights on the farm and you go for um you walk with the goats out into the pasture and have a picnic we team up with them and we do a bubbles brunch and bee tree farm she's this she just built literally right before covid and hasn't been able to use yet we had to cancel a few events so wings are whenever they are and as things change i would stay tuned and follow them on social media and see when you can go visit the farm because it's beautiful they're super passionate, um, and it's always fun and grounding to play with goats. That was good. I like the way that the, the heat still lingers on your palate. Yeah. Need a little wine to wash that down. I'm ready for round number two. What are you thinking? Okay. You want to you wanna talk about Kunik? Or yeah, I'll, I'll kick it off, and then you can talk about Kunik. Um, so our next cheese is a – that last one was a fresh cheese. Um, our next one is a bloomy rind cheese, which just refers to the way they make it, and you can tell because it has this um, white – Rind on the outside. It's in the same family as a Brie or Camembert. This is made by Lorraine and Sheila at Nettle Nettle Farm um, and in Sanctuary. They actually have over 100 um, animals who are rejects or were going to be killed or um, once they have finished milking um, for this season, oftentimes it's hard to keep feeding them because you're paying for that. Um, you're pay not for the season. Once an animal has gone dry, let's say, and they're no longer producing, you would get rid of them because they aren't producing and, and pulling their weight. If you do that to any of them, they retire all their girls. Um, they adopt animals out. They have all sorts of rescue animals and um, other abled animals. So say an, a an animal that went blind or had an accident and had to have a leg amputated, they are a sanctuary for all these animals and they do it because it's their passion. Um, so their farm is nearby. Um, they are farmstead. This cheese is one of our shop most popular cheeses. Um, our shop lead, Gina, it's her favorite cheese. It is goat's milk and cow's cream. Um, I would taste the in That's why it um, ha this one has such a high butterfat content. So, like, if you touch it, it's just like butter on the inside, and especially if you're t depending on how warm yours is. Um, these come in a little like hockey puck disc size so we're all eating on like i don't know 30 wheels of cheese tonight so our what we taste could be different from yours and they could come from different batches which is what's cool about artisanal cheese is it will be different from batch to batch and it was in the vat and the make process um you're gonna get it i haven't tasted it yet i think you're gonna get the tanginess from the goat's milk um grassiness from the cow's milk and then really that buttery um mm -hmm. from the cow's cream eat the inside first then try a bite with the rind to eat the rind or not we a rind is a terrible thing to waste. So give it a try, and then if you like it, eat it, and if you don't, don't. Uh, I think this is going to be John's weird pairing. Yep. This um, is going to be, I haven't tried it yet. No, it's going to be Okay, so I'm going to let him introduce it. And, and the location of where this comes from yeah, is really special this is to you. awesome. So uh, this is a triple cream, Don. That's a good question. Mm. Um, and triple creams so often good. have that. Yeah, it's so tasty tonight. Taste, it's awesome. Room temperature. I don't, know, I don't know about your pairing. So... Nettle Meadow Creamery is in this little tiny town called Johnsburg, New York. And so Johnsburg, New York is like population 25. It's northwest of uh, Lake George. And when I was a kid in the summer, that's the town that we would go and spend a weekend or a week with my family. It was this tiny town called Johnsburg. And so I have yet to get to visit Nettle Meadow Farm as on my own as a family but our parents a, have been but my parents have because they would go up there after we opened the shop we found nettle meadow creamery um i was reading a book a cheese book as you do and you, i saw johnsburg new york and i was like whoa cheese and so this actual farm is only about a mile from that place where i grew up and spent my summers and so um the reason why i chose cowtails was just because i one of my most vivid memories in that town as a kid was walking to the general store with my cousin and we ended up buying for some reason with the 25 cents we had we bought cowtails it was my first experience and i probably only had cowtails like three other times in my life again i've never had a cowtail but I'm excited. it was so memorable that i was like oh this is my memory of junk food at when i went on road trips to this little town and these are american made because it's all over this wrapper yeah they want to make sure that you know uh this is it smells really good uh from gotz's candy company this was founded in 1895 
So it's an old school company. And in 1917, they came up with their soft caramel chews, which they called Bullseyes, which is their like signature product. Uh, and then the actual original Cowtail was launched in 1984. So a Bullseye looks like that and it's smaller, it's a little bit bigger and round. They wanted to make the same kind of experience, but in a rope style. So this is called a cow tail. The other is a bullseye, a play on bovines. They're both ah. bovine, animal related. Duh. And so what I, I thought was super cool was that multiple of the Gotts family have been inducted into the Candy Hall of Fame. Mm. I, I didn't even know there's a Candy Hall of no Fame. No way, right? Like that's super cool. And so this is uh, like a vanilla cream wrapped inside of a caramel, a soft caramel chew. I don't know how this Okay, this is the one I, all, I want you to save a bite back because I have a different cheese that I want you to try this um, this candy with. Mm. Okay, I'm going together. I'm going to double it. By the way, I loved the um, Kunik with the rind tonight on it. So, um, can Kate, you type in some of the pairings mm -hmm. so people know? So John's yeah, gonna I'll start up. typing in pairings. Pairing number two. And sometimes the plates get jostled in transition, but all the pairings are next to the cheeses. Okay, cream. I can totally do that. Mmm. I mean, it's, just, it's like a little bit of toothsomeness to it, which I like. Okay. The butter flavor. It brings out the center sweetness when you pair it with the, the cheese gets saltier and the cow tail gets sweeter. I'm still choosing the cow tail. Mm -hmm. mm. I love it. I, I don't think they're... They don't go against each other. I'm not against it. I'm not sure if I'm for it yet. You're right. I'm just fine. like taking... The, I'm, I'm not... Dawn is saying I'm it. In the, I'm assuming that Dawn knows everything. So, And okay. Paige says it's weirdly good. I think it's quite pleasant on my palate. It's crazy. It makes the cow tail so much sweeter yep. when it's with the cheese. And the kunik more salty. Yeah. It, okay. it kind of offsets. Anyway, that's a fun pairing. Save a little bit back. Kendall's got a master plan. I always believe in Kendall's master plan. I really want to put the cow tail with this other cheese. I'm not telling you yet. And John was like, but then that's not my story about me going to the Adirondacks as a kid on a road I trip. I just lived like, okay. an amazing childhood memory. I feel great. I feel and we're doing this just for you and your nostalgia tonight. Uh -huh. okay. That's it. It's all about me. <laughs> all about me, y'all. All right. It's great. He's number three. If you have any questions, definitely type them in. We'll do our best to answer them as we're going through. Um, that was yeah, also go back afterwards um, and answer anything that we yeah. missed. And we'll up there too. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I'm so happy. Do you want to talk about Oma or Funyuns? I'm going to start off with Oma. Yeah, perfect. Mm, okay, we're on cheese number three. Cheese number three. Which is around four o'clock. It's like three or four o'clock. It is. It has a thinnish orange kind of looking right, uh, rind. Um, has all these beautiful little holes in it. This is a wash drying cheese. Take our cheese 101, but we've now done a fresh, a bloomy wine and wash drying. Your cheat sheet is on the back of your menu about how we define the seven styles of cheese. These are normally your more pungent or stinky cheeses, AKA Kindle's favorite cheeses. Mm -hmm. Right now it smells really cavey. A little ammonia, but I think it's cave. Yeah, it's more cave. Um, that orange color comes from uh, bee linens or brevi bacterian linens, and that white mm. is f derives from penicillium. These, this, and the last cheese were both um, surface ripened cheeses. So you are encouraging the growth of certain bacteria or molds on the outside, which will break down the proteins and affect the way the inside um, ages. Um, this is a cow's milk cheese named Oma. Um, these wash rind cheeses are typically known for being savory. So um, beef broth, bouillon cube, French onion soup, I often feel, often feel like, um, caramelized onions. You just get a really like heartiness in these. Um, we will often pair these with like mustards or like a savory onion jam. Um, Oma means grandma. Um, and this is named by the, or made by the Von Trapp family in Vermont. So we just went from Texas to New York to Vermont. We're gonna come all the way back over here in just a minute. Um, what else was I going to say about it? It's amazing. It's organic. Um, this is made by the Von Trapp family. Yeah, the Von Trapp family. Of the Sound of Music. It's of the, the Sound of Music. Some of the family. Um, it's been a working dairy since 1959. Mm. Um, and uh, it's just... It's oh my God, I love that cheese. so good. It's so wonderful. I, I didn't think, mean to interrupt you. I mean, I kind of did. 
No, that's all right. But it's um, full flavored, stinky. Kind of uh, tastes like mustard seeds to me now, but that might be because I just said it. Yeah, and so um, get the cave on the rhyme. This is all Jersey cow milk, so it's extra rich right now. Mm. Um, if, if you tasted it, I hope you tasted the inside first and then a bite with the rind, and you'll see how much more cave and funk comes when you try the rind with it. Yeah. Oh. That's the rind is outstanding. Yeah, it tastes really good tonight. As, as far as washed rinds go, the flavor of this rind is almost perfect on, on this wheel that I'm tasting today. When you exhale out through your nose, you get some of that earthy, dark chocolate note on it it's really wonderful um and so and like the bitter notes that are reminiscent of dark chocolate mm -hmm. so not like overpowering bitter but that of dark chocolate and it, if you get a few minutes later and you're interested we did a um a tasting with jasper hill farm who plays a, a hand in uh, eight cheese aging and you can see uh, inside their caves in the video it's really fantastic um this is an awesome pairing y'all so, Okay, I don't Natalie, think I'm... No, it's all right. Natalie asked, what do you do? What do you mean by cave? Mm. Natalie, I'll answer that in a second, but let's talk about Funyuns. A classic, a okay. Funyun. Guys. These should be crunchy. You should know also, if you take a cheese class with us and you're coming into the property, we always were very specific about it, but we only cut and plate like the minutes leading up to it. In fact, if you've been in our cheese house, we might be hustling to get it done. And that's because we always want it fresh cut on your plate. These to do the these are ones so people can, for COVID, come pick up or have it delivered. Um, we cut every day that morning of, so our team was cutting from 8 a.m. to noon, but a little bit stale because the moisture A little bit of stale, yeah. But the flavor is full on there, so Who I'm knew? still a big fan. Who knew? Okay. We should have just put a giant bag on each plate maybe next time. We'll figure it next out. Next time. We'll get... If Funyuns ever show up in our business again, we'll have it not nailed down. Okay, but this is an awesome so, pairing. this pairing is crushing it. So Funyuns, it's a base snack with a garlic and onion seasoning on it um, it's designed to taste like a, a fried onion like a blooming onion or uh, onion rings and this was this was launched in 1969 so think about like space food like that's kind of what they were playing with like oh yeah just for the record we are fully aware that this was probably the brownest plate of food for eating. I unwrapped it in the plastic wrap and I was like preservatives I just smell preservatives. <laughs> so, the fun facts that I found out about this guy is that this was actually named by a professor at the University of North Texas because mm. onions, which was the original name for it, was already taken. Oh. So you couldn't they couldn't call that. So then, it, so were these a southern thing? I have no idea. Oh. I don't. I don't. I didn't get that deep into it. George Binyer was the was the guy that. Uh, made it and this is clearly well, there are no onion it's not an onion ring but it's made with onion powder or seasoning it's, it's flavored to taste like <laughs> onion which is awesome and one of the probably things no that, onion in this onion yeah flavoring. there's probably not and then um the uh uh this is in a breaking bad there's uh, two fun references to breaking bad this was jesse pinkman's favorite snack that he would go mm. to this is uh, in my research of these foods i found two breaking bad references which is like huh crazy so th that's a trend and it's also the last thing. show that you watched that like gave you big nightmares and now you will yeah, only yeah, watch romantic no, that's comedies right, that's it. after breaking bad john was like that's it i'm done watching any drama i don't care if it was really good acting i can't take it so they, they <laughs> like this tastes like french onion soup to me oh yeah that that was my favorite combo mm -hmm. so far in the fact of in the sense of them both elevating each other and the funyun roast of the occasion and the omar roast of the occasion neither one canceled each other out and they're like we can play on the playground compatibly. That was so good. I hope you all love this as much as I do. Um, Did y'all eat the rind? What did you think about it? Oh, um, Missy asked if we could eat the bread. You, the bread moved to the side. You're right. You can eat the bread. It's not a pairing. My bad. Um, <laughs> Earlier when you said, don't eat the bread, I was like, what's he talking about? Not, I would, I, um, the one thing we do say is for your first bite, don't rub it on the bread or smear it on the bread because then if you taste it, you're not going to taste the cheese. You just taste the yeast. But then after you've gotten to know the cheese, then you eat it however you want and go for it. And this bread is made fresh daily by Easy Tiger. Did you, while I was enjoying that bite, did you talk about the cave, what cave means? No. Right, for Natalie? Sometimes we're sitting right next to each other and we're not listening to each other. But this is how it goes. That's <laughs> we what have we're, two kids and evolving together for I'm, We're what, dealing with days? three screens.
I've got sunglasses on today. There's just the road trip. It's I know. Like, Cousin Clark said he wants to see your beautiful eyes. John does have some dreamy eyes, y'all. I'll make him take these glasses off for him. Mm -hmm. My Nana, who passed away from Alzheimer's, wasn't that the first thing she ever said about you when she looked at you? was like, oh, your eyes. She yeah. was flirting with you. Sure. <laughs> okay. So cave or... If we are not pretentious, but some people will call it cobs. Oh, gosh. Oftentimes, um, it is sometimes, traditionally, it was an actual cave. Um, more often than not, oh, there's those big dreamy brown eyes. Oh. Um, more often than not, it's cellars, um, some sort of refrigeration system. Um, some caves or cellars are blown out into the side of a hill or a mountain. In France, John went and worked for Eric Mons, who did them also in railroad tunnels. The main thing is that you, when you're aging cheese or the process of affinage, that you are controlling airflow, um, humidity, um, temperature, all of those things. And you have to move your cheeses at different times into different areas. And so you know that like, oh, it gets more wind flow here. It needs to go there to dry out a little bit and lose a little moisture. Or, oh no, my cheese is cracking. I need to quickly move it into an area that has higher moisture. And the goal is that you never get to where you're in those extremes anyway. But um, you're always trying to find the perfect way to, to grow and age this tree, cheese that controls the moisture loss. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's awesome. So fun. I like, uh, Kyle made a comment I was laughing at. It said, no onions were harmed in the making of fun. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't think any funny is work. We didn't get a bag to go with it, so we don't know actual yeah. ingredients. Did you like how when I said, sorry, if you want to eat this, there's basically gluten all over this plate. Speaking of uh, bags, uh, Funyuns and uh, our bugle, well, Funyuns and bugles came in boxes in the original days, not bags. Oh. Cool. Why don't we go on to the next one? I've been so excited for uh, Randy Rabbit, Savage, a little... Um, WWW wrestling reference put here your, coming up in a Put second. your stick down. I'm not ready. Let's do cheese first. You After got all, it, we're a cheese shop. Okay. We are going to go oh, to... One, two, Dawn three, asked if she's getting any crystals in the rind. Mm. So, Dawn, that's probably... It's not tyrosine like you would expect in um, uh, cheeses that are aged like a aged Gouda. It's likely more like a calcium lactate or salt um, that... Uh, and, kind of combined on the rind so they, they're a little bit of texture to it but uh different than the crystals that we usually talk about in cheese yeah okay um okay so we're doing cheese number four which was about at five o'clock um this um is cut differently this cheese comes in a square format um that would be the size of your plate if your plate were square um it has this amazing beautiful natural rind on it this style of cheese is our soft ripened cheeses Soft, ripe, and firm and hard all kind of breaks down to the way it was made and um, the age of the cheese. Uh, this one, we're, we've now gone up northeast coast, but we're going to come back down and go into Virginia. This is made um, in the mountains um, by, by Helen Feet. Um, her parents started um, this farm. Actually, it's a family endeavor. I forget. I, don't, I want to make sure I say everybody's names. No, Helen started it, and now oh, yeah. her, her kids all of them. Um, so Helen and Rick, Rick takes care of the land um, and Helen takes care of the cheese making and then her daughter Kat um, and now her son-in-law also helps out with the land. So why does the land matter? Um, they've had this farm for a while now, um, but in the late 80s to 90s, I think it was in the 90s, that they started practicing. They were one of the first early adopters of rotational grazing, which is a style of caring for your land that came out of New Zealand. So basically, um, it's the theory or no, it's the practice of not letting your animals sit on one pasture for too long, because if they overgraze those grasses, um, you're going to start to get monocultures. Um, only one grass, which means only one grass is going to go there. It won't be as diverse. Um, you're not getting a lot of nutrients into the soil. So if you do rotational grazing, it basically means you let your animals come through and they kind of, they perfectly graze, if you do it right, perfectly graze down the tops of those forbs and grasses. Um, but not so much that they kill it. They poop there, they stomp on it, fertilizes the ground, and they keep moving on. And that puts oxygen back in the, so the soil. It creates diverse um, grasses, and then it also encourages the growth of other wildlife. So that's why it's called, some, in some ways, regenerative practices. So rotational is you only let them on a certain plot of land for a certain amount of time, and you keep moving them to other areas. Um, and they were one of the first early adopters 
Her whole Appalachian was the first cheese they made. And this is an award-winning cheese. It's won first place in the American category. They say the recipe is super simple. And the whole goal is just to show off the milk, but then really take care of it in affinage or that aging practice. This beautiful yellow hue comes from this being a um, grass-fed cheese. So it's really, and it's raw milk. So by not being heat treated, um, they're letting all of the quality of the milk and the terroir of that area and how much they've taken care of their grasses shine through on this cheese. That is amazing right now. Is it good? That cheese is outstanding. I all haven't right. done the pairing, but. Mm. Um, they are also members of the Guild um, International de Formanger, which uh, as well. Um, which is a, a group that you're invited to be in, and we got to see them being inducted. It was pretty cool. It's so cool. It's okay. so cool. Um, so Andrew was asking for a friend if this is a good cheese on a sandwich. Mm. So Andrew, if you are able to communicate with your friend, th any cheese is good on a sandwich, mm. but this one particularly outstanding. This is a great one that I hope when you put it, you didn't just chew it and swallow it, because the more you kept it there and, and macerated it and chewed on it, the more the full flavor came out of that. And there's no additives or anything. It's really good quality milk that makes a really flavorful cheese. And if you taste a little bit of the rind, it's super, it looks like dirt, smells like dirt. Mm. There's a hint of uh, earthiness to it. It's going to go great with red wine. Well, the rind is pretty subtle right now. Mm -hmm. um, if we were like in the wine world, we'd say soil. It tastes soil. of soil. We like to say it tastes like dirt in a good way, um, but it tastes like the aging cage. Or Snap into a Slim Jim. I've been waiting all night for <laughs> that. That is awesome. Okay, I have it to It smells admit, just like I remember when I was a kid. I ate a lot of Slim Jims growing Macho up. Macho Man Randy Savage, y'all. I don't even know how to open this. You, you, will, you will remember. It'll oh, yeah, come back okay. to you. Macho Man. Back, so I grew up watching WWF, WWW, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and Macho WWE. Man Randy Savage. It was WW, uh, the WWF, I think, for a while. WWE. And this is like I, a I new anyway, low point. Snap into a Slim Jim. He would go at the end of the commercial. Snap into a Slim Jim. This is made more like a pepperoni than like beef jerky, uh -huh. even though they call it a meat stick. Um, this was invented by a guy in Philadelphia um, in 1927. Um, and... It was sold in 1967 to General Mills, uh, and they moved the production from Philly down to Raleigh, North Carolina. There's really not, I don't know what kind of, well, let's not talk about the ingredients on this one. Um, but it, <laughs> in 1990, they recreated- I see it says pork and beef on it. They recreated the, the formula for the product. So in 1990, it actually changed from what it was in 1927. Mm. I just think that, are y'all? Oh yeah, I got. We got some Macho Man Randy Savage quotes out there. These are good. I remember watching him, watching him in like the very first like Royal Rumble way back in the day. He was like a legend. Um, anyway, super good. It's just like a simple pepperoni style salami uh, stick. And, it's a little uh, spicier than I remember. Yeah. I like it. I like it with the cream. I mean, clearly because it has the spice, it overpowers some of all the nuance of that delicious beautiful cheese but i think they go together on like a perfect hiking combo that i'd put them both in um and will you put the which pairing it was oh a pairing yeah i need to do that yeah all right you could just do three or four i'll do i'll start with pairing number three was um was what did y'all think Omar tell us what you uh thumbs up onion. on that pairing or not so that was the appellation and the slim jim um we need to get more gas stations to sell artisanal products. That's what we need to do. Um, they're they're we'll, kind of moving that way, right? I think part of the problem is, I mean, there are local corner stores in Austin that do a great selection of local stuff. So the hard part, as you know about it, is it's distribution. Yeah. So it's really, there aren't mm -hmm. small people distributed nationally in an easy way. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, Brenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. We're getting some. We're getting some thumbs up. All right, this next one's gonna be wacky too. I think we should do it. You wanna mm -hmm. dive in? Yeah. Okay, so um, our first, we've had goat's milk, which is tangy, grassy, minerally, um, sometimes citrusy um, and zesty. Cow's milk is the most versatile like on all these different flavor profiles, but really grassy and buttery. Sheep's milk, it is the richest. It's often known for being kind of nutty and takes on this nutty flavor profile. So think about an aged Pecorino Romano. 
Um, pecorino just means little sheep, but that style of cheese from Italy. Um, we are going to Wisconsin now. So we went, where did we go? We went Austin or Maine to New York, New York, Vermont, Vermont, Virginia. Virginia. Now we're headed to Wisconsin. Um, so this is made by Sid Cook of Car Valley Cheese in Wisconsin. They have uh, four production facilities. They're actually pretty big. Um, you can have one bite of this, but I need it back. Just take a bite. You can have a bite of a cowtail. Not all of it. We, we have a little bird sitting over here coming in to check on when the candy's going to be eaten. Okay, so they have, they're bigger for the artisan world. Um, Cave Age Marissa is one of their award-winning sheep milk cheeses. Um, this is... Um, a natural rinded cheese, again, on the outside. Um, so you can see that, like, cave or natural rinded cheese. When we talk about natural rinded cheeses, this means that nothing has been added. They didn't, like, put something as a layer on it. Instead, just when they naturally keep rubbing it down with salt and rubbing it off and the ambient molds and spores that grow on it in caves, it develops with this nut. So this is the cheese that starts to harden on the outside, and that's what a natural rind is. Natural rinds go great with red wines, um with um, stouts and porters and um, actually even hoppy, like hoppy bears too. Um, so it just it brings out that earthiness quality to it. So rich and nutty, I've had mine out a long time and you can actually, I can run my finger along it. I don't know if you can see it, but see that Probably what not. looks like grease? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Um, see how my fingers look wet? That's the butter fat that's weeping out. Um, mm. Mm, it smells fantastic. Smells great. Let's give it a taste. Yeah. And this, this dairy has been around for over a hundred years. Sid mm -hmm. is a fourth generation cheesemaker. There's a one, master cheesemaker, which is a designation in Wisconsin. Yeah. Won a gold medal in the, at the world championships this last year, this cheese. Um, I mean, and that tastes really good. Uh, you can just eat his cheese. Corinne asked if this would be paired well with a spotted cow. That beer is outstanding. You're going to have to tell us if it pairs well. I think it will. But I think it will. I mean, I would prefer the last two with the spotted cow, um, but... And this would be my one that I would lean towards a red, but I actually like my cow with all, mm. all cheese. That's so good. Okay. Um, this is going to be weird. Mm, I am excited for this. So this recipe. I would have preferred instead of ho-hos. Swiss cakes. Swiss, Swiss cakes. Rolls. Little Debbie Swiss cakes. But every time I go in a gas station, especially when I was pregnant, okay, I'd like to admit, say that I haven't had these things in a long time. But when I was pregnant with kid number one or two, well, no, number one was made on cupcakes. The other one was made out of... Kid number two was made ice, out of Little Debbie's. Little Debbie's and ice cream... And um, ice cream... Sandwiches. Yes, the kind that you get at a gas station. The Toll House ones that have 35 grams of fat per thing. So, I would prefer the Little Debbie's, but these are more true to gas stations. Because every time I go into a gas station, I look for the Little Debbie brand, and it's never that. It's always the Hostess. Hostess. Yeah. So, let's so do it. true to the experience. So, Hostess makes hose. Little Debbie makes cake. Swiss rolls. Mm. So, super good, right? And so like this sugar bomb. These uh, the recipe for this came from a San Francisco bakery in 1920. It was eventually acquired by a Hostess. I think these go together, y'all. I don't see why they wouldn't. It That's just weird. sounds outstanding. The texture of the cheese with that like. Okay, so you can be honest. I'm sorry, I was just a little. No, it's all good. Surprised um, that you weighed that one more. So the brand Hostess originated in 1919. The host, uh, ho ho itself, the recipe originated in 1920. Um, so it's just an old school treat, you know, a hundred years old, this recipe is that we're eating right now. Hostess, of course, is more well known for Twinkies, which in my dream, we had Twinkies on the plate. But then when I really thought about it, I didn't want to have a Twinkie on the plate tonight. Wasn't it all the news like 10 years back that Twinkies were going to stop being made? Yeah, maybe. I maybe. can't remember if they, somebody remind us that they oh. like restarted making them. But I remember mm. that being like a big thing, like Twinkies going out of business. Nice. It worked together. I know. <laughs> How are your food? I thought that weirdly worked together. Y'all let us know what you think. There's something. So Natalie that, says this is the bomb. The sheep's milk <laughs> actually had like the sweetness to it. Um, the cave age Marissa. Wow. And I think it worked well. First of all, I always love um, aged sheep's milk cheeses with chocolate. So that, so the chocolate outside, like that I thought would be go well together. It's just that the weird texture in the inside, but it's still like creamy. Both of them are, have a, enough cream and moisture there that it didn't feel like a dry. I was worried it was no. going to be like dry texturally and weird in my mouth. It was good. The, the you still have some toothsomeness. So what it tasted like, experience to me was like more of like a toasted brioche or something mm -hmm. like where you could crunch into it a little bit mm. Mm, with a little Nutella on top. Oh yeah, mm. that okay. was fun, y'all. 
That one, what a what a wild experience. It did work. It did not work when I included the rind. <laughs> okay, I'll try it. That was of uh, <laughs> You're like not pleasant when you do the This is why it's cool. Sometimes you try it with the rind with it out and it doesn't work It really right. it forces the mold to be forefront. Like it really pushes mold on the palate. Mm, well the rind is really moldy. Yeah. So it just forces it even more. It's pretty good. Will you turn off the music? It's driving me nuts. M- music. I hope y'all can't it. hear it, but the music's fading in and out. Yeah. Okay, the mold is really there. And I was going to say, uh, there is a local brand of meat stick called El Norteño mm. that is uh, really amazing and really delicious. If you can get uh, your hands on that, that's far better than the, the Slim Jim. Um, this is a small local company called El Norteño. Uh, super good. Taste it if you can. All right, cool. So next up, oh my gosh, it's we're doing good on time. I just we're doing good on time. Okay. We got about ten more minutes. We had that little kerfuffle at the beginning. We broke the internet. Remember? Oh yeah, with our. Are you just mad that it took this long to get to your favorite? Okay. All right. So um, I know when I said it was, are you a sweet or savory person? I was actually one of both, and I'm the weird person who has to go back and forth. That's probably how I legitimize it. But mm-hmm. if I had a sweet, then I had to go. So I was always like a, some sort of beef jerky kid. And PTOs, oh. and I would go back and forth. Yeah, I just had a great memory of my. Which means you weren't listening to me. You're thinking no. about your own memories. But no, you said between savory and, and sweet. But uh, do you remember when Dave and I did the Oreo cookies and Easy Cheese? That would have been great on the plate tonight. Did I ever tell you that one? No, but we're gonna we're gonna pause. We'll that. come back. To that. Okay, that's a whole that's different his brother. Um, okay, Seascape. We are going to a cheddar. We're headed to California. Get in the car, guys. We got a long haul from Wisconsin to California. Um, this is Central Coast Creamery in Paso Robles. Reggie is the cheese maker. Reggie Jones. Um, he has actually been in the cheese business um, since early '90s. He worked for bigger industrial cheese makers. Um, and he was in quality control and product development and then did all sorts of range of jobs within that. And he and his wife, um, who met in college, dreamed of starting their own gig. They, she had gone to Cal Poly and loved the area, so they started up in Paso Robles. And now they make these award-winning cheeses. This is another mixed milk cheese of goat and cow, um, similar to the Kunick. Goat's milk going to give us that tanginess and that cow's milk, that butteriness. Um, but they do... Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Do not eat this rind. I mean, you can. It won't hurt you. But this little black is a thin, yeah. very that wax That one person rind. that's already inhaled it all. Yeah. Everything on a cheese has to be FD, FDA approved and edible, so it can't harm you. But this one won't have a lot of flavor. If you can peel it off, you can always do that and then eat up to the rind. Because you do get more of like the most um, strongest flavor profile right under the rind oftentimes. Um, and it, that cheese and the salt that's in it is always pulling it out. And so oftentimes that'll be more of the saltier bite, if you will, as well. Um, the reason I pair, oh, I shouldn't talk about it yet. Why you I should, don't. Okay. Talk, I'm, I'm not even going to mention, in. this is your, this was your parent. Okay. I did Kunick and I did the... Okay, PTOs. I had to, I can't remember the research like you can. Okay. Um, these gummy candies originally came from German. I know that you're half German and I'm somebody, I'm going to like offend your mother that I don't know how to say this word, but gummy bar. Anyway, there's a German sure. word, gummy bar, meaning gum. Um, and the original one was just hardened sap. Um, to, I found two conflicting evidence that the first gelatin-based candy was the gummy bear in 1922 by Hans Riegel. Um, but I found one that dated before that was in Friars of Lancashire in 1864, um, a gelatin-shaped candy. That's cool. So that's how long it goes back. Um, Oftentimes on this cheese and with goat's milk cheeses, I put apricot jam. So I love apricot jam or peach jam. And again, it's that tangy fruitiness. And so you get the acidity and that fruitiness with it. So I was like in the number one thing I go and he, John had made, like I made all the cheeses and John chose all the pairings to go with them. And then I was looking at it and I was like, but what's the number one thing I always get when I go in a gas station? And it's these PTOs. So let's try them. There, there are some that are sweet and sour. These I think are just sweet. It's like sweet and tangy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good little tang. Okay. Mm. What do we think? It's going to be great. How could it not be? Okay, but, but, I haven't gotten to do both yet because one of us should be talking mm. while the other one's eating. I do want you to try this one with the cow tail. I love the peach with it. Okay. Well, the peach, I hope, was bringing out that acid. It's like acid forward. The cow tail, this cheese also has like a little bit of a caramel 
up into it, when a goat's cheese ages way out, that uh, it can turn into this like butterscotch toffee oh, caramel so note. Good. And so try it with the peachio and then also try it with the cacao to bring out that caramel flavor profile. I think the peachio crushed it. Okay. But it's hard to I don't know about hard to do and talk. I don't know about you guys, but I tasted with both the red and the orange. Did it make color. a difference? No. I have no idea, but I did it. And so now I'm going to go back and taste it with just the orange and see what happens. You think that when they're making it, that they're thinking about it that much? Mmm. That was so good. Yeah, yeah. Texturally, that's weird. you got to get around it. I'm surprised that actually the it, thing that stays on my palate longest is the cheese. So the gummy bear, I mean the Piccio, that overwhelming sweetness, cloying, cloying sweetness doesn't like overwhelm the cheese. I think it's like peaches and cream, y'all. I think it tastes more like uh, a Sauvignon Blanc. Like what I'm breathing out through my nose now. Mm. It's like what a Sauvignon Blanc would like do. Like that floral bouquet. Uh -huh. Super. Uh, the nose. Yeah. Super floral. Super um, sweet. Like. I do not think this would be, my ideal drink pairing with that would be a white wine. Like yeah. you just said. Mm -hmm. um, or sparkling. That was cool. That was wild. I loved it. Okay. I'm going to try it with the. the Cattail, because I go cal for it and cattail, tell them. cattail, because I, I fought you on this one, but I'm glad I went with the Pichios. Oh, that's okay. so good though. Oh, yeah. and we're going in the seven styles here, um, which is also fun. Um, I thought that worked too. Sarah uh, asked why the the rind gem. So basically, Sarah, uh, the cheesemaker decides at, at the beginning of the process what they're going to, the final product is going to be, and so if you have mold. Choosing the type of mold will impact what kind of rind you end up with. You might have the white rind. You might have the blue rind. Um, an aged cheeses, a cheesemaker may choose wax, so like a thick wax, or this paraffin wax, which is more like a paint. You can choose any color. This is sort of a brownish hue. Uh, they also make a cheese, their goat gouda, which is black. Uh, they make a cheese that has, uh, I think, a purple. And, and that's so they can tell what cheese it is when they're in a cave, right? When you're looking at the outside. And stylistically to wax it or not, um, it, one could argue it's, um, it's really challenging to create delicious natural rinded cheeses and you have to have the environment for it. Another is stylistically, if you wax rinded or age in cryovac, um, you're retaining a lot of the moisture so it can't dry out. So it really all, and we'd go into depth about in that in our cheese 101, so you can try to join our cheese 101, but we would talk some yeah. more in so Josh said he was uh, cow, team cowtail. Um, I mean, then, also Josh though the peachios went great with yeah, that. I, I'm, yeah, I mean, I probably have peachy on my face still. You, I'm, I, I'm I, just, so good. You do, but I don't think they can see it this angle. That's I think right. you still have some bugle on your beard. Bugle on my beard. Okay, it okay. Happens. we got and one then, last pairing. Uh, Elena asked if we do this for engagement parties, y'all. We are our team, our events team is. They're looking for work. They're. You know, um, we have been able to keep our entire, entire team, staff. so thank you guys and so they're much. They're doing virtual tastings two to three times a night for private private folks. Uh, just Friday, for we friends. have five private tastings, I think. So, and yeah, so, if you want to get a group together, we're doing different but things. But I need to eat this last one. Do you okay. want to do? I want to talk about the pairing. Do you want to do cheese again, or do you want me to do both? I'll, I'll start. Okay. And Fantastic. Then, um, uh, thanks. <laughs> it's, it's sweet that you act like. You have a choice. Do you want the microphone? Because then I just do whatever I want. <laughs> so he's an amazing partner. Yeah, I just like do, again, he rolls with whatever the punches are. Okay, so uh, Sweetgrass Dairy makes this. Um, it's out of Georgia, Thomasville. Um, this is a natural blue, which will affect the way that it ages and tastes. Um, it's a creamier blue. It's both creamy and crumbly. On your palate, there are certain blues that are piquant that like slap in the face. Um, this is not one of those. This was started, the farm was started years ago by Al and then Desiree, and Al was, um, Al Fair, who, we had a German thing kind of going on tonight, yeah. um, whose ancestors were German, married Desiree there, and then now their um, daughter, Jessica Little, took over the farm, and her husband, Jeremy, um, and they're the ones who really took over the cheese making operation and grew it into everything it is today. Um, it's another farmstead cheese. Um, Blue cheeses are, you can kind of see it in your piece of cheese if you look at it. There's like little needle punctures. Blue cheeses are pierced because the mold is aerobic. So as soon as the oxygen hits the mold that's already present in the cheese, that's what allows it to vein or develop different coloring. Uh, 
they pierce this 50 times on each side. So just think of um, that labor that goes into it. Some places use a press, other places will do it by hand. Um, great, so this is their Asher Blue, and I haven't gotten to taste this cheese in a really long time. So we brought it in for this, I had to try it. Yeah. Oh, you're taking notes. I was like, what are you I doing I was just there? typing I mean, in the pairings. I get so excited, I forget. I am pumped about this. This is not like... Oh, we had to order a special combo for this, y'all. Yeah. I was, when I was researching best road trip snacks, I had... Combos haven't been in my world for about 15 years or so. Mm, it is milder. Sorry. No, it's all good, my love. <laughs> Mushroomy, earthy. I need to taste. Um, a cool story is after Hurricane Harvey, they, they said that cheese is their love language and feeding people is their love language. Um... It's more specifically that feeding people is their lung love language, and they do that through cheese, which is kind of like mm. our personal mission is to spread joy. And right now, we think there's tons of ways to spread joy. It just so happens that we do it through cheese. So after Hurricane Harvey, they knew they wanted to get cheese um, to the Houston Food Bank, and so they collaborated with other cheesemakers in the um, Georgia area, um, well, in that region, and then loaded up. They were all ready to donate and couldn't figure out how to do it, and so developed their own distribution channels and partnered with some other distributors just to develop, just to donate all this cheese into our area. So that's pretty cool, um, I think, a story that yeah. they were helping us out. Okay, I gave you time to try to eat the combo, the co, while we were going for this one. So fun, y'all. So fun. So I don't like blue, still give this one a try. I think it's worth trying. Yeah, combos came out in the mid-70s. They were introduced by Anheuser-Busch, their snack brand, back in the 70s, and I can understand why. I'm like These are scared. little salt bombs make you want to eat more. This is a special flavor that we brought in just for tonight, Buffalo Blue Cheese Combos, which is a new flavor profile um, that they're working on. There's mm. actually some spice on it in the, in the finish in the back of the throat. It's not spice up front, it's spice in back. Yum. Um, these combos first came out, even though they manufactured the pretzel one first, they first came out with uh, cracker-based combos. Those are great together. Combos. Yeah, this was going to be a home run. This was sort of my, when I was searching websites in order to buy all the junk food. Because we couldn't, we, for these classes, if we don't sell it, we're having trouble getting things. Uh-huh. Um, so we were like sourcing through mm. Walmart and Target and Amazon. I know that went really well together. Mm -hmm. So we had to specifically source for look for this buffalo blue. Combo. I don't know how regular that is at gas stations. We're all used to the little like bright orange cheese that came out of it. Yeah, um, the little cracker base. The, but one of our mm. salads that we make. So maybe you don't know this, this is a fun trip down memory lane. On our honeymoon, John, who's a CPA by trade, turned to me and said he's going to quit his job and do something in cheese. So good. Um, I don't know why I went back that go, far. You can go. It might as well. You, well, you can start you at the beginning. Well, you threw me with what you're, what you're saying. It. That is oh, going to be awesome. Okay. So originally, we thought it. he's like two years to investigate what he was going to do. And at the time, we started running a grilled cheese club out of our house. And we would do these like five or six courses of grilled cheese. Everything from appetizer to the main, to multiple mains, to then a dessert. We would like grill a dessert grilled cheese on there. But our favorite oh. one that John did was shrimp. And um, it's red hot and blue cheese. And, and butter. And we made that as a grilled cheese sandwich. Um, mm. I think somehow we got lettuce on it and it didn't wilt. It was butter lettuce. Um, that was one of our favorite things. And to this day, we still eat that as a salad. So we eat, we make a butter lettuce salad with Frank's red hot shrimp and blue cheese. And this is what this I'm reminds me of. I'm a sucker. I mean, if somebody would come out with a blue cheese that's just soaked in Frank's red hot, I would eat that. I would love that. I don't know. I'm a sucker for it. A flavor profile. Hey, we have artisanal taste and we have junk food yeah. taste. That was awesome, y'all. What a fun trip. You did it! We made it. We didn't run out of gas. The car kept going. No flat tires. Um, I've enjoyed myself quite a bit. This was such a fun night. Um, I'd love to hear what your favorites are, y'all. I mean, you can vote seven times, but there were some pe people that said that was the best combo of the night. Okay, so you guys give us your thumbs up. You can only vote as many times as you want because it's oh, your yeah. rules. So whose favorite was pairing number one, our B-Tree, Chev, and Bugles? And so give me mm. your thumbs up. All right, we got some hearts. Boom, 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 boom. Whose favorite was number two, our Oma, no, our Kunik. Sorry, mm -hmm. our Kunik and Cattails. 
Nope, you're still waiting on that one. Okay, fine. Mm. Who? There we go. Well, oh, that got a lot. Well, we're late. I know, but we were waiting. Okay, whose favorite defensive on uh-huh. Whose favorite was the Oma with... What did we do the Oma with? We did the oh, I ate it all. I know. It's hard to tell because you ate everything. What did, I, what did we do the Oma Funyuns. with? Funyuns. I ate all my Oma funyuns. with the Funyuns. All right. That's geared up. Oh. Who, <laughs> whose favorite was Appalachian with yeah. our Slim Jim? I hope somebody accidentally mad these or tears. That's just it'll hit. All right. Then we've got Cave Age Marissa with our Ho-Hos. Don't eat my Ho-Ho. That's mine. I do not give it to her. And then we did Seascape. Peachos. With Peachos. Come and on, then, make it rain. And rain. Seascape with Cowtail. Also good. And then Asher Loop with Buffalo Boo Cops. Mm. All right, y'all guys are awesome. Y'all are incredible. We wanted to say thank you. Again, we have so many tastings coming up. We do both of these on Facebook Live or, or on any of our other classes taught by our our team via private video links if you want to be on camera and you can chat um like actually talk um we gotta save some of those forever um let's see well oh i wanted to tell you that by doing this you're supporting our mission you're keeping the team employed um you're giving us something to look forward to each week um a friend hit it on the head when she said i think what's hard right now is that none of us have something to look forward to like what's coming up so we hope that these tastings are something that you get to look forward to. Um, we're honored and humbled that they are, and that we know people celebrating special occasions and birthdays. Our son's eighth birthday is coming. I'm starting to feel sad that we can't do something more for him. So thank you for letting us be a part of those. Um, and then mostly living our core principles, which is passion, purpose, uh, to be true to ourselves and to others, to improve every day. Um, and to be a juggernaut of awesome. So we hope tonight, guys, that we were a juggernaut of awesome for you. We always take constructive feedback. And thanks for playing along and just our weird kooky pairings and our road trip. And here is until we can feel the wind in our hair again um, and hit the pavement and hit the road. You are not alone, even if you feel alone at home. Uh, you can always join us in the Antonellis and come into our home. So here you go, guys. Cheers to Cheers, you. Cheers, y'all. Have an awesome night.